Joining us now, Jerome Corsi, who himself has basing his own legal fight with the special counsel after rejecting Mueller's plea deal because he says he refuses to lie under oath against President Trump. Dr. Corsi was criminally threatened and coerced to tell a lie, call it the truth, as he explained on this show. And now here to give us further reaction, author of the book Silence No More, Dr. Jerome Corsi. You spent 40 hours with Mueller, correct? Yes, Sean, 40 hours. And they were willing to say, and you're 72 years old, right? Yes, I'm 72. And in the course of answering questions, you didn't remember emails specifically from two years prior. Correct. And at times you amended some of your testimony? Almost continuously, because as I said, I'm not a human tape recorder. You can't punch a button, and I can't remember precisely conversations or emails. Uh, in this gotcha game that the Mueller prosecutors were determined to play, uh, it became uh, psychologically really disturbing. And uh, by the end of 40 hours, I think my mind was complete mush. Uh, uh, I can't tell you who was on the show Monday, so I don't know. I'd be in, I'd, I'd be, I'm with you. Um, but when you found out and when you went through your papers and your emails and stuff, you said, uh-oh, I got that wrong. Here's the truth. You amended it. Le uh, First, your reaction to the pre-dawn raid of Roger Stone today? Well, I was shocked. I mean, I think this is Gestapo-like tactics. I mean, what's the point in having all these armed police with riot gear bursting into a house at 7 a.m., uh, wife and Roger in bed? I mean, this is not America. Uh, this is not the way we treat people in America who are basically trying just to be political operatives who are earning a living, and I mean, it, it frightens me to think what the FBI could do bursting into my home with my wife asleep and the family asleep. There's no need for it. And uh, I think increasingly that we're seeing an out-of-control Mueller operation that is determined to terrorize people and criminalize politics. I think it's very frightening for the direction of America. You are, do you still fear, because when you refu refused to sign what you said was a, a lie, what was said to you and your attorneys, and are you afraid that they're now going to pre-dawn raid you and your house? Well, it could happen. I mean, the attorneys, uh, why attorneys were told by the Mueller group, well, we'll take it from here, very angry, arrogant. And that's, of course, now been the end of November, and nothing has happened. I think when I read this indictment today, it's absolutely clear I'm not being accused of no wrongdoing. I, I've done nothing wrong, Sean. I brought in and offered all my computers, my backup systems, my cell phone, my emails. I went in to cooperate. I've offered to cooperate throughout the process. And I've, I did not willingly and knowingly give information I knew to be false to deceive the special prosecutor. I had a memory problems. You were referred to as person number one in Roger's indictment. And they go through a series of emails that were and communications between the two of you, where basically, you know, you're saying, oh, look, what does WikiLeaks have now? Af this is after Debbie Wasserman Schultz, the first Clinton email dump, which we never would have gotten probably if a lot of these things were better protected. That's a different I issue for a different day. But it's mentioned you want to find out. You were working for World Net Daily at the time. You wanted to find out, like everyone else in the media, what else did Julian Assange and WikiLeaks have? What, what was he going to release next? And you were talking about it. Now, I know that you wrote a dissertation at Harvard, did you not, on the Pentagon Papers? Yes, in fact, there's my uh, PhD dissertation in 1972 in the Department of Political Science. It was on the Pentagon Papers case. I mean, I'm thinking that was now 47 years ago. I mean, it was amazing to me that that's what I focused on. But as a journalist, I had a right to talk with Assange, to speak with Assange, to publish what Assange had. It's just that I, I had no contact with Assange. The New York Times published it. Yes. Yeah, and by the way, you said to me, you've never talked to Julian Assange. Never. And I've never neither talked is, to... Neither is Roger Stone, if I remember correctly. I, I, as far as I know, I mean, I don't... I, Roger can speak for himself, but I know for myself that I have never spoken with Julian Assange directly or indirectly. So had no contact. So comparing the Pentagon Papers case, which you did a dissertation ironically on, and looking at this case, all you and Roger want to know is what does he have... Neither one of you were part of a conspiracy to steal information from anybody, nor did you steal any information from anybody. The precedence, 6-3 Supreme Court decision in the Pentagon Papers case, 
uh, the U.S. against the New York Times clearly states that the Times had a right to publish information as long as they didn't steal it. And you were requesting information and trying to find information, like many others in the media, what was coming next, correct? You're exactly right, Sean. And we had right to do this. It was uh, every... Every journalist and person involved in political operations and the campaigns, Julian Assange not only dropped 40,000 emails on Debbie Wasserman Schultz on July 22, 2016, within a day or two, he said he had more emails to come. And, of course, the speculation was rampant. I wanted to know. Everybody wanted to know. And I passed on a couple of emails to Ted Malik to say, go see Assange. Roger had written those emails. But there's no crime in any of this. This is just normal why do you, why politics. Why are you confident? You seem, le you seem confident the last time you were on the show that you were going to get a pre-dawn raid. You feel that it's less likely today. Why? Much less likely. I think I've pushed back. I've written this book, Silent No More. Uh, the indictment it suggests nothing I've done that's wrong. I believe I've done nothing wrong. And, and as you're far prepared, as I can... though, if it does happen. Well, I mean, if it does happen, we'll deal with it. But my family's prepared. But it has made my life, my family's life, my wife, the entire family a nightmare. And days you can't sleep, it, you know, up days, bad days. Uh, this is not America. I, I was done nothing wrong. I was a journalist. I went in I, to the best of my ability with faulty memory. I can be convicted of having a bad memory. But I can't be convicted of telling the special counsel or the FBI something I knew to be false to deceive them. It didn't happen. All right. We'll watch carefully. This is scary. You know, if Hillary Clinton can delete 33,000 subpoenaed emails, acid wash her hard drive, and bust up devices, nothing happens. All these other people, high-ranking people we know lied to Congress, nothing happens. Scary for this country.